Well, let's do take two. Didn't have the mic on the first take. Man, at least I noticed it like a few minutes in instead of like 30 minutes in. So, here I am. Got my crappy shirt on today. Um, few day growth. Proof I, I do grow hair. I'm not uh, bald. <laughs> you know, since the, uh, the, the whole meme is that the most Black Desert content creators are bald with a beard. You know, uh... I'm not getting called out for this one. I choose to shave this head. <laughs> uh, I want to talk today about content that I want to see in Black Desert. Uh, things that, a few quality of life things, and things that I think would uh, just improve the game, or at least for me it would. Um, first off, I got some boxes to open here in a little bit, but uh, we got silver items. They may be a scam. I bought one of these 10... 10 plus one boxes for a billion silver. I don't know if they're going to be a money maker or not, or just a waste of silver. We'll see. Most things that are in this box are okay. Um, the memory fragments will break even on. The 50 cron stones I'll probably break even on. Um, and then most of the things above that level of like 50 crons and up, I'll probably make money on but uh i'm looking for lightstone of fire strike and i'm looking for garmoth's heart if i can get one of those out of the boxes it saves me a hell of a lot of time um and it would be a, an account upgrade uh so uh, we'll, we'll open a few i may buy a, a couple more um i don't mind throwing you know several billion at it if i lose it like two or three or four billion here or there is not that big of a deal um, it, it really isn't. It's only like, I mean, you can make that silver back in, in no time at all. Uh, but let me go over some of the, the things. Let me get the dice off there because that's annoying. Let me go over some of the things that um, I already talked about because Mike wasn't on. <laughs> uh, it is this time though, obviously. So I want to see a few quality of life changes. Give me a drop down down here that allows me to select if the horse is breedable or not. Seeing how some of these are breedable. I mean, we can we can search for horses based on tier, based on skills, based on gender, and even based on level, but we can't search if they're breedable or not. And I'm sorry, but whenever I go here and I select a thing and then I have to scroll through to see if any of them are breedable and just keep clicking and looking, it's annoying. It's a tiny little change, and it would help a lot. Um, this, the next thing is going to be... Also, if I'm a little wonky today, uh, the migraine is set in, so I'm trying to get this recorded before it gets too bad. Uh, so bear with me here. Um, another thing are our crates. Uh, the only real re way that we have to get... And I'm looking down because I got it on my phone um, under the camera there against my screen. The only real thing about crates are, um, they, they're too heavy. They're still too heavy. We can't transport them with our ships well. We can't, the wagons, we can't. Uh, we need to be able to mass transport them. And I'm not talking about like a few hundred at a time. I'm talking about tens. Those of us that do crates all the time. Uh, I'm not even a huge, huge crate producer. Let me bring up storage. But I still have tens of thousands of crates just laying around. Look at all these in Valencia that are being crafted. Look at all these in Moodle that I have. And I mean, uh, it's like 10, 15,000 probably, maybe 20. You know, because I sell them every time I get 20 to 30,000, I sell them off. But, you know, there's people that have hundreds of thousands or even a million crates uh, laying around because that's all they do. How are you supposed to transport that? Like, you can only transport a thousand at a time through the transport system. If you got a value pack, I think it's like a thousand and fifty. Like, that's a problem. That's not the value pack, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's the, um, blessing of Kama Silv. But, that, that's a problem. Um, let us let us overstack, or at least like reduce the 
weight of the crates or um, give us a separate weight for our ships and wagons where where for uh, trade crates or or just like trade items in general then again they're not gonna address that and it'll never happen because trading was reworked twice already and removed so you know but alas it's something I want to see in the game uh, I enjoy the trade crate stuff I like to take all my things and my workers and, and make the crates and and do it so that's what I like to do uh, this kind of pulls me into the next thing I want a player for higher system I want a better sense of community I want to be able to play with other players um, and I well I mean not just play with them but I want to like be able to interact with them so let give us a system where we can hire or or be hired by other players so if we have like a big ship we can rent it out so we basically get a contract and we transport so many so many goods for for the the other player and then whenever we arrived at, at the destination um, then we we fulfill the contract and we get the silver you know that kind of thing um, same with wagons across land ships across the ocean that kind of stuff it would make this shipping here we go let's hit the mic some more I'm a terrible content creator <laughs> Uh, it would make the the shipping um, it would establish shipping lanes and that kind of stuff and it would just um, it would help you know uh, it would give us some player interaction uh, so those are three like quality of life things that I think would would um, be good another quality of life thing I think is we need another tool slot um, not a tool slot, but we need tools for uh, a couple of life skills. We need a cooking and an alchemy. And so we got the riding crop for for um, training, and we have all the life tools for all of the like gathering things. But and like fishing, we have plenty of different life tools, but we don't have anything for um, cooking or alchemy I think it should take the same slot as the riding crop and I think it should be manos give me a ladle I want a ladle you know like a big like soup spoon uh, give me my manos ladle for cooking and then the same with alchemy I want like a manos beaker you know like one of those little glass like um, like a flask or beaker an Erlenmeyer flask or whatever they're called <laughs> so I think that would be cool and it would add mastery just like the riding crop does um, maybe have like a cooking time reduction on it or something you know um, but then they would probably not sell as many uh, costumes for that so maybe not the cooking time reduction I don't know I don't know it's already so easy to get like one second cooking anyway uh, it, it doesn't really matter but I think that's another um, quality of life change that we could we could see um, it would be nice uh, the last one as far as like quality of life goes the world feels too small um, I was watching some World of Warcraft videos, I don't know, like, uh, this past week, um, and sometime in the last few days. The world feels so big in there. I know, like, the map is big, and there's a lot of areas, but I just mean, like, the, everything in it, too. Like, I watched a guy playing his character walking across a bridge, and the bridge was, like, huge. And it felt like it was a bridge, you know, and not just some little, like, like here. It's, like, it's teeny tiny. Like, make that bridge about three times that size. Make it huge. Make it feel like you're part of the world, not just, like, at the distance looking in. I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, as far as scale goes, like, it just doesn't feel like the player is part of the world. It feels like you're watching a character that's part of a world, you know? It's like almost everything is, like, small down here in Black Desert. Like, even the buildings and stuff. Yeah, you can go in them, but look how small that building is. Like the storage building, and yeah, my character can run in there, but it just feels small. Make it huge. I want to feel like, I want to like take my camera and look up and be like, wow, that's a big building. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't feel like that in Black Desert. I mean, even the castle up there just doesn't feel that big. I'm talking about like, like the the cities in that I saw in the World of Warcraft videos. The, you were like walking down the street, and it was just huge. You actually felt like you were in a big city. Um, here, I just. Uh, you just don't even in like Calfion, you, you just don't so I think um, let us zoom the camera out a little bit and I know they'd have to rework the whole game for for like the scaling but that's just something that bothers me it's not even something that really has to be changed or 
or I expect to be even addressed. But it, I just wanted to add, throw it on the list of things that irk me. Now, <sighs> PvP. How do we address PvP? Well, I'll tell you. We need more player interaction anyway, and the whole PvP hardcore community has shunned this game because of the choices. I think that the way these servers are set up is wrong. I think it's backwards, and I think it needs to be addressed. First thing that I would change Take the Syringia servers, for example. They're all just normal servers. And then we have an NA, we have one PvP server. I think it should be reversed. I think two out of every single one of these should be taken it. And we should have so Calpheon one and two, Serendia one and two, Valencia one and two, and Sylvia one and two. What is that? Eight? Yeah. And Medea, one and two. And Balanos, one and two. So, twelve. I think those two, the first couple, so that would give us twelve servers. Right? Maybe give us about seven or eight. Those should be PvE only servers. And the rest of them should be just like Arsha enabled all the time and that's it that way if you play on those servers you know where you're getting into if it's crowded on the other ones tough luck too bad um i'm sorry um but i think that would make the game feel a lot a lot better but that would set it up to where there that fixes the whole consent thing because if you're playing on those servers then you know uh that it's a possibility like you you're consenting by connecting right uh, and I think Robus is doing this a little bit. Like, they added in the, the Arsha anonymous uh, server here. But I don't... I, I think there should be only a handful of PvE only, and the rest of them should be PvP all the time. Um, maybe with a handful of, like, normal normal servers or something. But, but I don't think so. I think it should be either or, and I think the majority of them should be PvP all the time. It's, it is what it is. And now, the other half of addressing this is that the karma system needs to be reworked. The way we have it now, we have negative and positive karma, right? Blah, blah, blah. That's what I say. You kill somebody, you lose karma. Yeah, but the penalties are too big. I get it. Um, there does need to be a karma style system. But I think that the penalties need to be changed. And what I suggest and what I would like to see is a bounty and fugitive system. So, if you go neg karma, uh, or whatever, it, it would be... Um, it would be renown and fugitive status, basically, is what what I'm suggesting. So, uh, if you if you have, I'll talk about renown here in a little bit. But fugitive status is what it would be. You would be like you would have scales, so you would be like, uh, eh, and then you'd be like a criminal, and then you'd be fugitive way down at the bottom. So if you hit like criminal status and you do like go around randomly killing people on normal servers. Um, or PvP enabled servers. Uh, yeah, you're gonna go red name. Yeah, you're gonna be known as a criminal. Right? But if you get killed, you're not going to lose crystals. You're not gonna lose experience. You know, or break your gear. All that needs to go away. And what I, why I think that, and all the PvE only players are going to hate me for this, but the, the reason it needs to go away is to stop deterring people from interacting. Uh, what needs to actually happen is a server needs to track these players that go negative, and a bounty system is in place. So anybody that is a criminal, or, or 
fugitive, I guess you could say. The system puts out a bounty, so any player can go to the bounty board and see. Oh, that player is a criminal. If you are the one that takes down the criminal, you get the bounty. And the worse, and the more time goes on, the worse it, they, they do, the more players that they kill, the worse they get, the bigger the bounty. And this also interdress, like, introduces uh, a merc system, so that players that want to chase the players that have a bounty on their head can hire mercs and make a team. And if you get hunted down by a merc team, I guess you shouldn't have went red. Um, and then if one of the mercs, the mercenaries that's been uh, hired, get, get gets the takedown or the kill on the red player, uh, then whoever started, you know, wh whoever hired them, uh, it, it goes back to the, the hiring of other players, you know, like the community interacting. Whoever hired them gets credit for the kill, and then whatever percentage that was in the con the merc contract that was agreed upon uh, gets paid to the mercenary, and then the the hiring player uh, or leader or whatever gets the, the bounty so i think that would rework it a little bit now what happens to the red name player or the fugitive or criminal whatever you want to call them when they get killed well we got to have some kind of negative percussions right for for doing that. we've already got the positive reinforcement for this uh players that are don't want to be on the bad side of things or the negative side of things, uh, they can work together. Um, they, they get in incentive to take these players down. They get the bounty rewards, right? Well, the negative. What happens to the players, the, the red name players? Um, they get sent to jail. Uh, they can't leave. Their gear is stripped off and locked into like storage or whatever, and their character has a, a sentence. Depending on how red or how bad of a criminal they are, they're stuck in there. Uh, so basically... We would have to rework uh, the, the the jail or uh, set one up aside from the PLQ place, you know, or, or whatever down there. And the Me, the Me Quinn uh, place in the bottom of the map, way the hell down here. So we need an actual, like, jail uh, surrounding the town down here. And it's, it's a barren wasteland. Uh, but you're stripped of your gear, you get prison gear, and there's guards... Um, and I would set up something to where, like, if you, if you hit, like, like make us, if you play and you make a certain kind of silver, all rule, like, anything goes in there. Kill each other over and over again, whoever's in there, they fine, you're all criminals, you're in there. Uh, your character's stuck, and you can't use your normal gear, you get issued a standardized gear set, which you can kind of upgrade a little bit, so it's like a mini game inside of the game, right? A free-for-all mess. Uh, the guards are in there, and they—they the NPC guards are more powerful. Yeah, they'll kill you if they find you fighting or uh, doing things you shouldn't be able to do. Uh, we could also implement a smuggling system to where players outside the jail could uh, do like a black market smuggle in uh, stuff to these players if they wanted to help them and, and kind of be on the bad side of things and help them. Um, but the idea is you stay in there until your sentence is up, Unless you can figure out how to get out and escape. Um, if you get out early by doing a good behavior work release, um, get a certain amount of silver and get out of there. Uh, there's going to be very low silver making methods inside the, the um, jail like area um, surrounding the, the prison and like the little town around there um, that you get out. Now if you get out... Um, complete your sentence or um, manage to hit the silver threshold for good behavior right don't get caught anything in any any uh, by any guards but if the guards catch you doing something bad and they kill you you get time added to the sentence and this time only ticks down while you're online it's not like oh I'll just wait until it ticks down no you got to be online like, okay leave your character AFK that's fine but if somebody else comes along and kills you then you know that's fine um, but once you're out, your fugitive status is, is like wiped clean, uh, or criminal status, and you start back over zero. Now, if you go do it again, obviously you're, you're a con, and you're going to get heavier penalties the next time you get, you know, sent there. Um, it, 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 it's a whole system 
but I think that would be good. Now, if you can manage to escape, if you can get strong enough in the jail and uh, get past the guards, beat them, and escape, then you become a fugitive. And every day in game, or, or whatever you want, time goes by that you're a fugitive, the bounty keeps increasing, like maybe every week or every day, if nobody uh, gets you. Eventually they will, unless you just log off and don't ever log back on, you know, but, um, yeah. So the incentive to, like, hunt you down is, is, um, is there for players that aren't, uh, criminal status. And I think that would fix a lot of the player interaction PvP, because this would only take place on the pre PvP servers, you know, obviously, the PvE only, like, the life skillers could go on there and not worry about getting just destroyed all the time because they don't have combat gear. Um, I, th I think that's the way to go. Um, I think that would fix a lot. Now, the Renown that I talked about is the last part. We have a battle arena. I think that that needs to be reworked a little bit too, and I, I want to see like an old Roman-style Colosseum. Uh, the players that win gain renown players that lose well you shouldn't have lost <laughs> um, basically you wager silver to be in whatever gear you take in just choose to take in with you if you lose bye bye it's forfeit um, if you choose to take like higher end combat gear yeah your chances of winning are gonna be better but you can also get a standardized set from the NPCs and just use that gear as well. Now, the players in in the prison, if they want to opt into this, they'll get their sentence reduced. If they manage to win, they'll, get, they'll gain their freedom. If they lose, they get time added. <laughs> that's just how it goes. So, uh, you know, that that's that's kind of how the system would be set up um, and then like the prisoners are, are, would have standardized gear like that's the detriment well you shouldn't have been a prisoner you want to opt in there is a chance of getting out if you're good uh, at PvP but if you're bad um, you're stuck in there longer uh, so they ship them in that's kind of how they did Roman Coliseum anyway the prisoners would fight you know the gladiators and stuff and then um, like the people like the people that wanted glory, you know, to make themselves look good. They got all the all the best equipment. So it's kind of set up the same way. Now, inside the Coliseum is a free-for-all uh, tournament style. Basically, when a round or, or, or when a fight starts, the, just everybody's in there. And it's going to be like random Battle Royale stuff. So there's random uh, buffs that spawn. There's random equipment spawns that you might be able to get better for uh, your class like oh look this weapon is is better I and mean, obviously the stuff that you pick up in there would be only for there like it'll go away when you're when the when the fight's over right it's not like you pick it up but um i think that would be a fun like pvp game mode you don't lose anything except for the stuff that you wager and you know that you're gonna lose that beforehand and you don't have to do that to opt in um Basically, the silver you're going to wager is, is what you're opting in with. And then the gear, if you want to take it, is optional. Um, and then if you lose, obviously you lose that stuff. But, um, you know, you wouldn't have to. Now, the Renown. The reason that players would even want to do this. Renown, they, uh, they're going to allow you to have NPC discounts throughout the world. Uh, the NPC dialogues and stuff would be like mentioning them like they're oh a renowned player you know that kind of stuff just dynamic things you're gonna get titles uh silver that kind of thing um and i think that would be a good pvp addition somebody else may have suggested stuff like this but it's just something i haven't seen anything like it and it's just something that's floating around in my head so i decided i, I wanted to relay it but uh those are the few changes i think that I would um kind of like roughly just Blah, puked it out in in a note notepad on my phone but that, that's kind of a, a few systems I would like to see uh, but, but that's all I got for um, quality of life stuff
and PvP stuff. But that's my take on it, and that's content that I would like to see, um, personally. I think it would make things more fun, at least for me. Um, now, let's see if I can waste some silver. Let's open some boxes. Fifteen memory fragments? Really? Forty-five million. Well, wasted on that one. Twenty crown. Yeah, I can see how this is gonna go. Twenty crowns. Fifteen minutes. Okay, so we're four boxes in, and we're already down bad. You serious right now? Okay, we smash it. Yeah, don't buy these boxes. Um, let's, let's see what happens. So we're at three, let me calculate this to see just how bad. 3.3 .3 times 30, what is that like? 3.3 .3 times 30. That's 100 mil. Um, 220 times 3. 660, so 760, and then, what, 100 Kaffirs, so 20 Kaffirs. I lost a couple hundred mil on that. So, what am I going to do for content? We're going to risk two more billion. Because three is what I feel like I could do. And that's all we're going to waste on this... Why does that happen? And that's all we're gonna waste on this uh, on this venture, because I have crate money, that, and I'm not really doing anything with my crates. But I have crate, uh, I can have crates I can sell, and I'm not really doing anything with my silver right now. So, yeah, these boxes are awful. People said, "Oh, I spent two thousand oil, please. That's not too bad. I spent ten bill, and I made back twenty. Sure you did. 50 crowns. Mm, we got a box out of that. Spirit dust feels bad, man. What is that? Two boxes. Two. Okay, now we're making our silver back. gear C. Okay, get out of the cron stones, please. Give me the Garmoth's heart. We're gonna let this one slow roll. Oh, we're so close. 50 stack. Okay, I want to see what these horse treads are. What are these for? Sturdy well okay, so you just sell them. Uh the Krog Dollar horse gear might be good. Um seven more. More loyalties that are useless to me. Memory fragments that are useless. More stacks that are useless. Give me a Garmoth's heart, man. We can't get them off the marketplace, and we can't get it from Garmoth. Why can't we get it from uh, from a box? No, we'd rather have 20 crowns. All right, so we spent three bill, and we're at 165 times 3.3. That's 544. Let me um, write this down so we can see just how terrible these boxes are. I'm doing this for you all. 545, 370 times 3, 1.1. <sighs> what is this? I don't even know what Kaffirs are going for now. Or 20, what are they, like 2 million? Yeah, about 
been listed at 1.9. So 2.28. What else do we have? Krog Dalo Horse Gear C, and those that's another 100 mil. Um, Krog Dalo. Not elephant. What am I doing? Rogdalo C is what? 1.2. Departing. <laughs> well, that's men listed. <laughs> One bill. Um, Chambron. Yeah, we're, we might maybe get a bill out of this. Of course, we'd have to get like the C1 that was the the worst that nobody really wants um, so we're at about one bill plus one bill plus 545 million plus 228 million Plus a hundred million. Uh, we broke even. It's about 2.9. By the time, uh, by the time we get taxes and stuff, we lost a few hundred million. Um, and that's if I was to, like, sell everything. Um, obviously I won't be selling either one of those that can't. <sighs> Should I do it for the content? One more. One more billion? One more billion, and then I'm going to end this off. Alright, so that's four. That's 44 boxes total. Get out of the nose. Mustache. Mustache problems. Okay, here we go. 15... That hurts bad. The, the 15 memory fragments hurt. I'm going to burn this wagon. Get out. Get 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 out of here. We're going. We're going away from that. Two thousand loyalties. You know, the loyalties aren't bad because you can use those for value packs if you have to. Hmm. Another box. We don't want the memory fragments, guys. We don't want it. Pearl Abyss. You may stop. You may start dooming and glooming like the rest of the content creators. They do. They do, they do. Um, what can we do to, to like, mess with RNG? Can we, like, open some menus or something? It's all tinfoil. That made it worse. Shouldn't have brought up the Black Spirit. Now I'm gonna get nothing but Krons the rest of the time. Really? Alright, I'm done with this. Just give me my 60 Krons and get out of my face. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. We are, um... We're done with those boxes. Oh, and, um... As far as the C ones go, it's really whatever is... not in the market, which is probably, like, the barding. Definitely stirrups or champagne. Nope, stirrups. Here's how you get this back. Mm -hmm. I am standing ready to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. 
1 billion silver return. So, only lost about 3. Terrible. Terribleness. Alright, guys, I'm out of here. Um, that's my content that I would like to see. Um, Land of Morning Light Part 2 is next week. So, have fun with Sovereign Weapons, I suppose. Um, hope you guys have a good one. And, I'm gonna go deal with this migraine. So, until next time.